Hey, what's up guys? So this is my wife's 2016 Honda Fit, and the time has come for us to upgrade this car. Now, we've got a bunch of countermeasures installed here, and before I remove everything to trade the car in, I wanna go over what all we've got installed here. We'll do a debrief as far as what was good, what was bad, and what I would do differently. And then I'll go ahead and uninstall everything and get ready for the next car, which is gonna be bigger, better for the family, more power to accelerate, etc. So with that said, let's take a closer look now here uh, at this Honda Fit. Now to start things off, let's begin here first in the cabin. Uh, now, as far as our radar detector, we've got an Escort Max 360C, the original version right there. Uh, we've got a dash cam installed behind there. That's the VFO A139 Pro. It's two channel version, so front. Uh, in the rear camera, you can see installed right there on the rear window. Uh, there's a remote uh, button right here for it to trigger the emergency recordings. There's also a hardwire cable right here for the escort radar detector, remote mute, uh, lockout, etc. This is also going to control the laser jammers, which are installed in the front of the car too, a set of escort ZW5s. Uh, there's a foam mount here for her that's not hardwired or anything. I just kind of got it stuck here uh, with double stick tape, uh, which is run down there to a cigarette lighter uh, to plug in for her phone and then a second port right there for my phone as well. Now, taking a closer look at things here, as far as the radar detector, you can see we've got a hardwire detector mounted up high above the rear view mirror. As I mentioned before, it's an Escort Max 360C, the original one. I had a spare one, so I wanted to give her a detector here uh, that had some arrows uh, for false alert filtering because it's almost all KA band. I've actually turned off KA band altogether, so it's just KA band uh, and laser detection integrated with the ZW5s. Um, there's no Escort Live running. She doesn't have it running on her phone or anything, so there's no Bluetooth for the speed limit or anything. There's no Wi-Fi in her car, so again, just kind of set up for KA band uh, and the arrows. Now, as far as the detector itself, I know she's had some saves from it, which is always nice. I asked her her thoughts overall as far as how she liked it, and she said it's okay. Uh, she does get some false alerts on it, which I thought was interesting because it's KA band only, so I'm assuming it means that it's alerting to KA band. Maybe there's an officer nearby somewhere, but she doesn't see the officer, so of course that can happen too. Um, so it's been fine. I mean, nothing particularly special, but fine. The detector is hardwired, and we've got the uh, remote mute button right here, which is very convenient, so she doesn't have to like reach up to the detector itself. She's got uh, just a button right there, boom, to press it. Something I've noticed is that with a double stick tape that I used right there, it's actually really easy for this to bump off by accident. Maybe if I'm getting in the car, I've got longer legs than her. I've many times actually knocked this off the car, just getting in and out of the car, especially if I don't put the seat back. Just, so many times I've had to like kind of double stick it like that. So I think maybe if I was to do it again, I'd do something with a little bit maybe stronger mounting option, but then maybe I would like bump my knee and it would hurt it more or something. So maybe a different mounting location would be good for that. And then when it comes to the laser jammers, I've got a set of Escort ZW5s installed on the grill right here. I really liked them for the, well, convenience of the install itself. They're wireless. There's no cable that actually runs back through the firewall uh, to the radar detector up on the windshield. And so I really liked it for the installation purposes. In terms of effectiveness, I installed them five years ago and we've got one, maybe two encounters with it in that entire time. There was one with like a PL3 or a PL4 in the mountains. And then another one maybe, which I think was like a True Speed S or something. We don't actually have a ton of laser here in the area, but it is nevertheless nice uh, to have some protection here against laser. Now her laser jammers are configured to automatically disarm after four seconds. You can see the setting right there just before it timed out. Uh, she also has the manual JTK option and I've showed her like you can just uh, double press the mute button here to go ahead and disarm the jammers if you wanna uh, disable them more quickly. But I put in the kind of the, uh, the fallback option here with the four second auto JTK and the jammers too. Now, overall, I think the ZW5s were fine. They did the job that they needed to do when we needed them. They integrated nicely with the Escort radar detector that we run here. They can auto JTK. Didn't need anything like crazy fancy as far as features and whatnot, but um, they have since been discontinued. Escort doesn't make them anymore, which is kind of unfortunate because that was the only option for like a wireless laser jammer that was actually really convenient to install, especially if you're doing something DIY. For the next car, I think I'm going to have a professional do it, which then does open up options for like more capable jammers, newer jammers, uh, better features, etc. So probably going to go with something else for the next car, um, but they served the job and I'm definitely grateful that we had them. And then as far as the dash cam, it's actually hidden here uh, behind the rear view mirror, out of sight for the perspective of the driver, which is really nice. It's a VFO A139 Pro uh, 4K dash cam, Starvis 2 sensor. I've been pretty happy with it overall. Uh, I've got it configured as a two channel dash cam. So uh, two cables, one for power, second for the rear camera right there. And you can see the uh, rear dash cam installed on the rear window right there. And you can see the dash cam here in the rearview mirror. It's pretty small. It doesn't block a ton of visibility back behind, which is always nice. Now, one of my wife's favorite features was actually the uh, emergency recording button that I installed right there. Now, she always loved kind of like saving in case something interesting or funny happened on the road. Now, the dash cam has a button to like save and protect that clip. You just push this button right there to trigger an emergency recording. Makes it easier to find the clip later. Make sure it doesn't get overwritten. Uh, but I put a second button right there that just does the same thing. So you just press the button like that, triggers an emergency recording clip on the dash cam. And that was always fun just to go back later and like share that clip uh, afterwards. 
Now, one upgrade that I never got around to is installing a dedicated battery pack here for the dash cam. Uh, it is hooked up to the car's uh, battery itself for a parking recording, and it has worked fine for the most part, but there have been situations where she gets back to the car and it actually kills the battery in the car and she can't start it next time. And so for that reason, we've actually now got like a jump start kit in the back of the car for times when uh, the dash cam would actually kill the car battery. Uh, what I've had to do to compensate for that is I've actually uh, kind of adjust the voltage cutoff threshold and been raising it higher and higher uh, so it doesn't drain the car battery as much. Now the trade-off though is it means the dash cam is not gonna record as long in parking recording and so we wind up getting like maybe two hours of parking recording, which is not enough. And so for that reason, I've actually been wanting to install something like a uh, power cell eight in her car, just haven't gotten around to it, been busy. Uh, and so I guess we're not gonna wind up doing it since we're about to trade in the car. Uh, that I think is actually a bug with like the hardwire cable with the A139 series dash cams. I've seen a couple other people report that as well. So I'm not totally sure what's up with that, but I do think that, yeah, having a dedicated uh, battery pack is helpful to avoid issues that may happen like that. Obviously it doesn't happen to everybody, but in our situation, it has happened. Now for the next car, I think I'm gonna wind up switching the dash cam out for the new uh, VFO A229 Pro instead. Uh, I like it better than the A139 Pro overall. So I'm gonna uninstall it here, then probably just like sell this one or give it away or something. But either way, yeah, I'll do a dash cam upgrade here too. And then as far as phone mounts, I've actually gone through quite a few and I haven't found any that I really like. Uh, the one that we're using right now, it's got a little sensor here so you can put your phone in. It'll automatically like uh, close like that and grab the phone, which is really nice. When you're done, you can just press the button again. It'll go ahead and open up. Have noticed like if there's no phone there, uh, this thing kind of vibrates, which gets sort of annoying. So it's definitely better having a phone installed but it does give us like faster uh, recharge speeds, which is nice for like iPhone and Android. Uh, it plugs down into the cigarette lighter like this. Uh, one plug is for the phone mount. Uh, the other one is for my phone if I wanna plug in there uh, and charge while we drive. The install is actually kind of ugly. Um, it's just a cable that's like running up here like this. Uh, and there's double stick tape that's holding it in place. I haven't found anywhere good to like run the cable like down and sort of hide it out of the way. I asked her about it and she didn't really care. So okay, I guess. But the next time I definitely wanna do like a cleaner install for her. Uh, in this regard. Getting it to securely attach to the car has been tricky too. Uh, the suction cup just on this material doesn't always work that well, especially over time. I put this extra pad uh, right here, as you can see, that kind of like double stick tape to the dash and then the suction cup attaches to that. That's actually worked better. Um, it's gonna be, I don't think that big of a deal to remove, but actually with that said, I guess it's about that time to go ahead and start pulling uh, all this stuff out of the car. So with that said, let's, uh, let's do it. Now, one thing I really like about uninstalling equipment is it's way easier than doing the install itself. Like, I mean, when you're installing things, you gotta take the time to run the cables, neatly tuck them in place, make sure everything is fit to length and stuff. But when you're uninstalling, I mean, this is the easy part. You just start grabbing stuff, yanking it off the windshield, you start pulling some cables and whatnot. So like, I love this part. <laughs> uh, the dash cam, this is gonna be tougher. Uh, the double stick tape there is usually like really strong. Um, and so I know now they make this like a uh, special clear film that you can put on the windshield that I've started using recently and it makes it way easier to remove the dash cam afterwards. So I think I'm gonna start doing that for future installs. But otherwise, yeah, we just start removing things. This I was really curious about too. So we'll just pop this off here. And then we've got uh, this pad that's installed here on the dash. Hopefully it pries up pretty easily. Oh, yeah, that's no big deal. All the airbag stuff, of course, we're extra careful for during the install. Uh, afterwards, pretty straightforward. Just start grabbing the cables and you can start uh, fishing them through. And then down in the fuse box, I've got a bunch of cables all just sort of like stuffed back here. So just got to start pulling all these out and unplugging everything. And then these ADA circuits I used in the fuse box to actually power everything. Uh, got to remove the original fuse and put it back into the fuse box. Always take a look at that. And it looks like uh, this cable here uh, for all the accessories that are plugged into there runs into the top fuse. So this is my uh, fuse that I've added in. And this one here at the bottom is for the original circuit. So I'll pull that out and put it back into the fuse box. And then for a lot of the vehicle grounds, I just uh, put a bolt here connecting to the uh, vehicle's chassis. So I can just start unscrewing this and removing the grounds. Now the rear dash cam, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug the cable from that. And then I actually ran the cable uh, just through this. I drilled a little hole uh, to run the cable and kind of uh, seal things up a little bit, but that should be pretty easy to remove. Kind of runs through there. We'll pull it out in just a minute. Uh, the dash cam itself, I've been really curious about this. Let's see how easily, Ooh, okay, I switch hands here. These come off. Go. That's that. So, okay, a little bit of scraping to get that off. Usually had pretty good luck with Windex. Been scraping a little bit here with my fingernail. Now, one of the reasons I went with the A139 Pro was because this front rear cable was so tiny and thin. Uh, to snake it through this uh, rubber piece right here was really tough with a lot of the other dash cams that had like a thicker USB cable. Uh, so, there were only a couple options like either Blackview or uh, some VFOs like this uh, that have the thinner cable. So, that was actually a really nice thing. I like that. that 
these kind of things do somewhat limit uh, your choices as far as you know getting it out is easier but trying to stuff this through like that was definitely tougher <laughs> now removing the mount for the front dash cam i always kind of dread this part because like they're installed so strongly right like in case of an accident or something like they're tough to get back there and just have to go back and pry without maybe like scratching the windshield or something so i was actually just googling a trick and it said you can take a little bit of dental floss and like wrap it around and start sawing it off so i'll, I'll try that real quick and let's find out if it works so we got it wrapped around like this, and I guess what the idea is you just start sawing like this. Oh, and I just ripped my flaws. <laughs> Try it again. Kind of gets stuck on there. It's actually the last of the dental floss. It's almost over. Might have to go try a different one. Before I do that, though, I've got this uh, trim tool here. It's designed to like help me pull, you know, body panels back and whatnot. I'll just kind of use it as like a pry bar and see if I can maybe start to get this off. Oh. Got it. Oh, okay, great. That was able to do the trick. Um, I like these as opposed to using a screwdriver, which I've used in the past, which could like maybe scratch the windshield or something. This, as you can see, it's kind of rounded in the back. So you can get it in there and just sort of wedge it off without potentially like scratching the windshield. And then to remove the residue, a lot of it is just like, I don't know, elbow grease, just trying to pick it off. I've also had some good luck with uh, Windex. Try to put it in the frame here so you can see. Uh, same thing with like a uh, different, you know, goo gone or goof off, just types of liquid. These can also help sometimes get this off too. I'll start with just the Windex, though. It is nice when everything sort of sticks together like this, and you can just kind of like keep peeling it back. I've had some tapes that, like, break apart, like some of the 3M stuff, but if you can peel away in, like, nice big chunks, and it looks like I'm mostly there. Just a couple last pieces to scrape off. Uh, doing this with short fingernails, by the way, is extra tough. <laughs> and then finally, we just need to go ahead and remove the laser jammers. For the heads themselves, I think I just used double stick tape, so we should just be able to go in there. And yeah, look at that. Pop right out. There we go. Awesome. And then we can do the same thing here for the other head over on the passenger side. And awesome. Yeah, they were secure for like the five years or so that we ran them. And look at that. Come right out. Just a little tape there and excellent. And then as far as the brains uh, for the laser jamming system, I tucked all of that here kind of back behind the battery. So I'm just gonna start pulling up some of these cables and whatnot, uh, and then I can uh, maybe power it off too. For that, um, I've got one just kind of like secured right here uh, to the power, and the other cable was just uh, hooked uh, right over there to the ground. Okay, so I'll just remove the power connector and then just screw this back on. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing here for the ground and then just remove the ground ring terminal. There's a couple different components that were tucked in there behind the battery. And then for the heads, they've got these uh, quick releases like this. Uh, we can just pull those apart and it'll make it easier to remove the heads. Now we can just start fishing these back out. There we go, there's one. I love it when laser jammers have uh, quick releases like this. So for uninstalling or like a damaged head or something, if you have to replace in time, it's always nice to uh, have the quick releases. There we go. And lastly, here's a look at everything finally removed from the car. We've got the radar detector, the dash cam, the phone mount, laser jamming system, and a bunch of cables to hook everything up and power this all together. And so with that said, yeah, we're really looking forward to getting this car traded in and upgrading now to a newer car. Stay tuned as far as uh, kind of the video going over what that car is. I'm gonna start going over the equipment that we wanna put into there. I don't think I'm gonna be reusing anything from here just because there's newer versions of everything that's now available uh, and that car is designed differently. And so some of the stuff, maybe we would actually wanna use something else based on the design of the car. So we'll definitely get to that. Uh, stay tuned for, I guess, the next car here uh, for our family and what all we're gonna put inside. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this and are doing well. And I'll see you in the next video.